Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. Uh, please, uh, Dixon John, you can take over. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. All the time. All the time. Uh, I'm very, very, very great to be in the presence of the Lord today, Sunday. Such a wonderful day. We thank God for his mercy upon our life and his glory upon us. We call our brother, who's going to lead us in the opening prayer, Mr. Sam Abdul. Amen. 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 All right, we thank God for, for such a wonderful day. Um, the Bible tells us that anywhere that two or three people have gathered in his name, there he is. Um, this morning, we are more than two, we are more than three, we are more than four. We are so happy that we are alive today. Uh, I will urge us to start, we start the service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Um, we sing some songs, and then uh, we start with the prayers. Amen. 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 We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah, all Almighty. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Almighty. So blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. So we lift our holy hands with what I call blessed. blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Singing blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up our hands. We want to call. Singing, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Oh, and I want us to praise, I want us to thank the Lord for his goodness, for his mercies that he has shown upon us. I was just checking the calendar today and like today is the 28th of February, the last day of the second month of 2021. I want you to open your mouth and thank the Lord for how far he has brought us, for his protection, for his mercies and for his guidance. Let's thank the Lord. 
Thank you. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We thank you for the end of the month. We thank you for the end of the month. We thank you for the end of the month. We thank you for the end of the month. We thank you for the end of the month. We thank you for the end of the month. We thank you for the end of the month. We thank you for the end of the month. We thank you for the end of the month. We thank you for the end of the month. We thank you for the end of the month. We thank you for the end of the month. We thank you for the end of the month. We thank you for the end of the month. We thank you for the end of the month. We thank you for the end of the month. to worship you, to adore you. Lord, 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 you lift us up. You pour your anointing you upon us. You walk in your word that you 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 will never depart from your word. It's a wonderful day that you have made. We worship you to us to adore you. Father, Lord, we thank you. Let's continue to pray. Let's thank the Lord. I mean, if you look at how the Lord, how far the Lord has brought us, I mean, it's just amazing. Um, 2021 started and, you know, we cannot just go out freely. There are lots of restrictions, but in all case, in all things, the Lord has been good to us. He has been good to you, to your family, both here in the Czech Republic, in Ghana, in Nigeria, wherever you are, even for the church, for the Church of Pentecost, for international, even up to the Czech Republic, in all assemblies, I think the Lord has been great to us. I want us to continue to continue to pray and thank Him, give Him the thanks. You know, we live in such a global world that whatever that will happen in, let's say, Germany, in the U.S., in Israel, will affect us. But so far, so good. Until this day, we're still enjoying peace. I want you to thank the Lord for the peace that He's even given to all nations to your home, pray and continue to give thanks to God. Father, we give you all the thank glory. You. We thank, thank you for the land of Czech Republic. We thank you for preserving our lives here in Czech Republic. We thank you, O God, for delivering us from every form of delivering us from the shame of war. Thank you for delivering us from the shame of war. Thank you for delivering us from the shame of war. Thank you for delivering us from the shame of war. Thank you for delivering us from the shame of war. Thank you for delivering us from the shame of war. Thank you for Amen. 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 Amen.
I want us to continue to pray. We pray to um, invite the Spirit of God to come and lead us through this service for today. We pray that may His anointing be seen in our ministry. May His power be felt within our gathering this day. May we not just lead by our own understanding. May we not lead by our own strength. But may the Spirit of God lead us and direct us in all affairs. In the mighty name, let's pray for the Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, may the Spirit come and lead us. May your spirit come and take control. May you touch. May you feel. May you work within our spirit. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. We continue to pray. Today we, we, we are praying that, oh Lord God, I mean, for, for the year, for the team, it's like revive us, oh Lord. We pray that may the revival continue, may the revival start among us, may the revival from the, the leadership of the church, even to the, the youngest child that was that, is, that was born uh, for us among us may the power of the Holy Ghost and the revival take us through in the mighty name and may we pray that oh Lord even if there is any impediment if there is any troubles if there is any weakness among us that is not making us to be able to see this revival to be able to feel the revival may the Holy Ghost and may the power of God Grant us the mercies, and may he establish us to be able to also partake in this revival. Let's pray for the revival. We pray in a mighty <laughs> Father, Jesus. We thank you, Jehovah God. We bless your name for such a wonderful day you've given unto us. We've come into your presence. We pray that may your spirit come and lead us. May your spirit come and take dominion over everything that we're going to do from our song ministration, from our Bible studies, from our preaching. We pray that may you, oh Lord God, come and lead us. Any spirit that will rise against us in this um, service today, we subdue them in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that may you come and talk to us, reveal the, the, the hidden things unto us. And by the, by the end of this service, we will say we are happy to be in your presence and we are happy to fellowship with one another. We thank you. We bless your name for such a wonderful day. Amen. 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 We, we thank you so much, Brother Sam, for such a wonderful opening prayer. It's such a great 
such a great opening prayer. Thank you, make Almighty God continue to bless you and your family. Now we move to before our Bible study, we we'll call our Eda, Eda Emmanuel Quentin to take come on podium for the Bible study. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God this morning for giving Amen. us the opportunity once again to meet in his presence to study his word. Hallelujah. Amen. The, song, the songwriter once said that when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what does he do? He sheds a glory on our way. Amen. Amen. So Amen. this morning we pray that by the end of the study, a glory will be shared on our way. Amen. Amen. So we want to quickly go to take a reflection of week five. And in week five, we talked about the role of intercessors. Hallelujah. And mm. we were privileged to take our reading from the book of Nehemiah, where we saw that there was a, a, a man by name Nehemiah who inquired of what has happened to his people when they came back from exile in Babylon. And uh, fortunate for him, he was serving as the cup bearer of one of the mightiest kings in the Medo Persian era, that is King Artaxerxes. And so the uh, Bible makes us understand that when he inquired, he was told that the walls were of Jerusalem were broken down and the gates were bent to ashes. And so Bible says that what did he do? In the Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 4, he said that when I heard these things, I sat down and wept. And for days I mourned and he fasted and he prayed to the Lord of heaven. Amen. So we saw the role he as Nehemiah uh, sorry, played in the life of his people, the Israelites, in the then era. Amen. And uh, during last week's submission, one of the things that uh, our father said that I want to quickly reflect on that, then we move on, was that uh, though Nehemiah was in a comfortable position, uh, he felt the need to come in to help his people. And that's one thing I want us to take from last week's study, that whilst we are in Europe, we might be faced with the Nehemiah syndrome, that we might be away from the family, we might be away from our people, and we might be in a comfortable position. But one thing we have to know is that in as much as we are here in Europe and uh, things are seem to be much better off than back home, God has positioned you here so that you work as an intercessor for your family back home to the glory of God, just as Nehemiah did. Amen. Amen. So on that note, we would want to quickly go to our Bible study for this week, and that is uh, uh, week seven, week seven, page 20. So Mr. Fedo, please, can you share the screen with us so that for those of us who don't have access to the Bible study manual, we can benefit it, from that. It's already on the screen. Yes, please. Thank you very much, Papa. So today's uh, topic can anyone help me? Week seven, page 20. Please, what do we have for our today's Bible study? Overcoming obstacles, obstacles to revival. Okay, so we are overcoming obstacles to revival. Amen. And interestingly, today's Bible study is going to be a follow-up on the previous uh, Bible study. Amen. But when you look at the topic, overcoming obstacles to revival, one word there that sums up what we are about to study has to do with the word obstacle. So when we mention that something is an obstacle, what does it mean? What comes to mind? Standing block. Come again. I heard somebody speaking. Hello. Well, for, for me, it um, tells about um, an impediment or a blockage, a blockage, something blocking the flow of something. <laughs> so blockage. Okay. So obstacle in this case, as our brother has mentioned, has to do with blockage, something that is preventing something that is hindering, hallelujah. So mm -hmm. an obstacle in, in its uh, meaning does not necessarily mean a total stop or a total uh, cannot move forward or a total cannot progress, but it is something that comes in as a temporal measure to prevent you. That means that you can break through an obstacle. I believe we are all there. Yes, sir. That means that, yeah, if you push, it is something you can overcome. It is not mm -hmm. something that 
it's unsurmountable. That is why it's called an obstacle. Amen. So Amen. in today's study, we would want to go to, interestingly today, we have also a very lengthy reading, Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 9 to 20. But starting from the verse 9, we will not get so much clear the picture. So please, you would start reading from the verse 7 to the 20. So Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 7 to 20. Uh, is Sister Helen on the line? I'm here. Yes, please. Kindly take I'm the reading here. for us. Okay, Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 7 to 20. Mm -hmm. But when Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the people of Ashdod heard that the repairs to Jerusalem's walls had gone ahead, and that, the, I'm sorry, I'm reading from the NIV, and that the gaps were being closed, they were very angry. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God and posted a God day and night to meet this threat. Meanwhile, the people in Judah said, the strength of the laborers is giving out and there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. Also our enemies said, before they know it or see us, we will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to the work. Then the Jews who lived near them came and told us 10 times over, wherever you turn, they will attack us. Therefore I stationed some of the people behind the lowest point of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by, by families with their swords, spears and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials and the rest of the people. Don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. 15, when our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated it, we all returned to the wall, each to our own work. From that day on, half of my men did the work, while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bolts, and armor. The, officer, the officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah, who were building the wall. Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other, and each of the builders wore wore his sword as his side, at his side as he worked. But the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me, 19. Then I said to the nobles, the officials and the rest of the people, the work is extensive and spread out and we are widely separated from each other, from each other along, the well, along the wall, verse 20. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, hallelujah, join us there, our God will fight for us. Can I please repeat verse 20? Verse yes, 20. Please. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. Amen. 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 And I think interestingly, it's not by coincidence that our sister wanted to recap the 20. It's actually our memory verse for today. <laughs> Amen. So yeah. when you go to the memory verse, it says that Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 20. In what place, therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye either unto us, our God shall fight for us. Amen. Please, can we all take the memory verse uh, just once and then we move on. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 20. Please, can we take it? One go. In what, In what place, place, therefore, therefore, therefore ye hear the sound, ye hear the sound, the sound of the trumpet, resort, resort ye either unto us, us. our God shall fight for us. Amen. Amen. So I think uh, the reading of the scriptures makes it clear. And uh, we studied last week that uh, Nehemiah rose up as one whom God has endowed with the grace of an intercessor to stand in for his people. Now, nevertheless, when he decided to take this work upon himself, there also came two obstacles in his way, by name Tobias and uh, Sambalat. And they, from the reading, we are clear of what they wanted to do, that whilst the people were trying to rebuild, they were trying to be a stumbling block and to prevent them from rebuilding the wall. So we are going to take our introduction and go to the questions and see how best 
we can deal with the subject of today, overcoming obstacles to revival. Amen. So the introduction, introduction, um, is Rose on the line? Yes, I'm here. Rose, please, can you help us take the introduction? Nehemiah, the leader, put his confidence in God. He inspired the people to believe and committed to the vision of the reconstruction of Jerusalem. Thus the Jews watched as much as they, as they prayed. They prayed to see God's favor in the world at hand for God's success. They prayed for God to protect them against the plans of the enemy. They prayed for wisdom to take the right decision on the job. And they prayed for the determination to complete the job come what may. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Rose. So in the introduction, we, we see a lot of prayer, prayer, prayer going on. Does the Jews was uh, sorry, does the Jews watched as much as they prayed? Number one, they prayed to see God's favor in the work at hand for good success. Then number two, they prayed for God to protect them against the plans of the enemy. Then number three, they prayed for wisdom to take the right decisions on the job. And number four, they prayed for the determination to complete the job come what may. Amen. Mm -hmm. So on that note, we would want to take our questions. And um, we would go from... Um, Okay, so Elder Solomon, please, you will help us with question one. And uh, Brother Eugene, you would help us with uh, question two. Um, AB, uh, you would help us with question three. And uh, question four, um, Imanu Donko. I see Imanu Donko on the line. Please, you would help us with question four. So please, let's take the questions as uh, usual. Thank you. Okay, so with, with the question one, uh, it says that what did the people do to overcome the obstacles to their, sorry, I think my- To their work. To their work, okay, because the other part is not seen over here. And um, I read from the verse nine, it says that, but we pray to our God and gather the city day and night to protect ourselves. So here we see the, the people adopting the two-way, what I'll call the two-way approach. That is mm -hmm. talking to God and taking the initiative. It says that they prayed and when they prayed, they didn't sit down and say that because we have prayed, everything will work out. But they also took the initiative to protect themselves. That even though we have prayed, God is, giving, God is going to protect us, but we also need to equip ourselves. It's just like if we are, if we are applying it to our, our daily life, you need a job and you pray to God. You don't sit aloof expecting that the job will fall from heaven and come to your table. No, you need to push in some applications. You need to talk to people. You need to link up with people. So once you are praying, you are also doing those initiatives and with the hand of God, you get the results. So here we see that when they prayed, they didn't sit down and say that God will come and build a wall. But mm -hmm. they took also the initiative to build the wall. While they were holding one weapon in their one hand, they were building the wall. So I believe that in every, in our whatever situation that we find ourselves, whether we are having issues with our marriage, if we are if we pray to God, we also need to do what we are supposed to do as husbands and wife to make the marriage work. If it is our academic, if we pray to God, we need to also do our our part as student to progress in our academic. If it as the workplace. When we pray to God for God to help us to be successful at the workplace, we need to also put in the hard work, you know, you know uh, uh, follow the protocols at the workplace to make sure that we are getting the output that we, 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 we want or we wish for. So what I see here is what I call the two-way approach. They pray to God and also 
took the initiative that was expected of them. Amen. Amen. Yeah, thank you very much, Elder. So in, in that, we can say from what Elder has submitted that prayer alone will not be enough. Yes. Yes. Okay. And okay. then it's like this, this COVID issue. Mm -hmm. We are praying, but mm -hmm. you need to be careful. You need to wash your hands. Mm -hmm. You need to take the, the uh, nose mask. All these mm -hmm. things that uh, uh, the protocol is demanding. So mm -hmm. you can say that I am a believer. I believe mm -hmm. in the blood and Jesus mm -hmm. will protect me. So mm -hmm. I, I won't follow the protocol. You see, it will <laughs> come back and eat you up. So mm -hmm. watch and pray is very, very important. And also okay. there are things that God will do and there are things that God expects us to do. So mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't leave all those things for God to do. That is why he has given us wisdom and brain to think. That's Other right. than that, if God wants to do everything for us, then there is no need for that thinking capacity that he has given to us. Okay. So, so let us apply both of it, that we watch and also we pray. And also we apply uh, what is logic and what we call common sense. We add common sense to whatever we are also doing as believers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Papa. Today we have pushed Papa to give his submission earlier than normal. <laughs> Thank you, Papa. Okay, so question two. Please, who is taking us through question two? What did Nehemiah do when he mm -hmm. received news of a plant attack, enemy attack on his people? Uh, we'll find mm -hmm. that in verse 13 and 14. I'll quickly read through. Uh, so in the lowest parts of the space behind the wall in open places, I stationed according to their families, with their swords, their spear, and their bows. I, and I looked and arose and said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and terrible and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. Amen. Amen. So what did Nehemiah do when he received? He positioned them and then he told them, do not be afraid. You need to fight for yourself. You need to, you need to fight for your brethren. You need to fight for your sons. You need to fight for your daughters. You need to fight for your wives and your homes. And so practically, uh, I think that our brothers, our elders Solomon said it all. Um, you, are, you are in a situation, you are in a time where uh, 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 you are in troubles. And so you need mm -hmm. to fight. You just don't have to sit down and then always in bed, always in bed. You are in trouble. And so you need to fight. As a Christian, one of our armors, one of our weapons is prayer. You need to pray. And then after, after the prayer, you act upon it. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you very much, Brother Eugene. The letter I want to add is that if you look at the positioning, I, I noticed that it was not just positioning, but I think he positioned people at the vulnerable sides of the project. Because he said at the lowest point of the wall, at the exposed places. So um, one thing that comes to mind as believers is that we all in this Christian work know where we are much vulnerable. And therefore, if it comes to putting in measures to overcome some of these challenges that we have as believers, the place where you are much more weaker, you put in more effort there. And so that is the little I, I learned with this. And then he also encouraged the people and urged them on to fight. And interestingly, I think Nehemiah was working with a high level of uh, wisdom because he didn't tell the people to fight for their nation, but he told them to fight for your family, fight for your sons and your daughters. And I believe that will go a long way to push them because these are people who are dear to them, their families, your wife, um, your kids. And so that is one thing we also have to learn from there that as believers, uh, Bible says that do good to the members of the household first. And that is one thing we can learn from it as Christians that we need to help each other in this Christian work, amen. Question three. 
Question three, how else did Nehemiah prepare his people to ward off the planned enemy attack? And if from verses 16 through 18, I read, from that day on half of my men did the work while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were building the wall. Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other. So um, it's telling us that I think Brother Elder Solomon also said something. When you pray, you have to take action, right? Mm -hmm. So after praying, they were prepared. They had to make sure that they were prepared. They had their bows, they had their spears, they had um, their shields and armor in their hands. And then the workers that were working were working with one hand and then the other and carried much the ones that carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other and each of the builders wore their sword so they were prepared they made sure that they were protected at the same time and they were alert amen amen, amen. thank you very much i think um in as much as we read in sometimes i think when we have a pictorial view of what we read, it, it really gives us a true reflection of what happened. I, I was just imagining when I was reading this that how can you be, as it were, holding, let me use in our days, trowel, having a trowel with a cement and holding a sword in another hand. I think it, it, it was not easy. It was quite an uncomfortable situation. And one thing I was trying to reflect and learn from it is that the Christian walk, sometimes you get to a place where it becomes challenging. It's not comfortable. And when you want to confront obstacles, you have to do the unusual. Because holding a sword and having, let's say, in those days, let's say clay or a brick in your hand, it's very uncomfortable. Are you building or are you fighting? So it means that I was looking at the situation where after laying one brick, you tend to see if the enemy is coming. <laughs> after laying another brick, you turn and see if the enemy is coming. So it was an uncomfortable position, but they had to be there because they had to ward off obstacles. And that comes to encourage us as believers that when you find yourself in an uncomfortable position, when you have to confront some obstacles, and some of these obstacles, you need to spend time in prayer. It's not just a few minutes of prayer. And praying for longer hours is uncomfortable. Studying the word of God, for longer hours it's, it's not comfortable to this flesh but you need to do all these things so that you'll be able to ward off the obstacle and it's not only in our time it has been done before Nehemiah and his people did it in the bible as we are reading and it's an opportunity for us to learn from what they did so that we can also do much better amen amen so we would um go to the question four but before that there was a part that really uh, caught my attention and uh, I would want us to quickly look at that. Uh, when you read the later part, it says that, and he put someone in charge to blow the trumpet, but that person was with him. That person was with him. I, I was really wondering why that person was with him. Can, can, can anyone from the class help us? Or uh, presiding, you will come in here. Is presiding on the line. Okay, Papa, for the sake of time, can you throw a little bit light on that for us? Okay. Um, you see, what we are learning today is, is Christian life. When mm. I say Christian life, is you made mention of you are holding one hand with... Um, sword and the other with mortar. It's combination. Mm -hmm. Because if we want to survive, we have to combine both of it. That is why as we are making normal job, we are studying, we are doing normal, we, we combine that with Christianity. Mm -hmm. So as in as much as we, we work to earn money. We have spiritual war warfare that we have to work, work on that. Mm -hmm. And if we don't combine the two, we cannot succeed. Because enemies are fighting us day in and day out. 
So if you think that I, I, I have to finish this one and do that one, you will lose it. That mm. is why God has given us both hands. Mm -hmm. That you have two hands. And if, if um, pragmatic approach is taken, you will be able to do that. And Nehemiah, being the spiritual or the leader, also stand in a position where he is looking on the shoulders of those who are working. Mm -hmm. When the enemies are coming, Nehemiah will be able to tap the guy, hey, my friend, blow the trumpet, they are coming. Because mm -hmm. some people mm -hmm. are so busy working on the wall, forgetting of watching that enemies are coming. So the spiritual mm. watchman, like I, the pastor, mm -hmm. that is why I've declared next week to be fasting and prayers. I have mm -hmm. seen that they are coming. Say, so mm. I am blowing the trumpet for us to come together and pray mm. to our God so that our God will fight for us. So mm. Nehemiah is, is, is the spiritual father so I will put, I will be the Nehemiah and presiding elder will be the trumpet brewer. So I will <laughs> tell to the, I will, I will elect the presiding elder, presiding, blow the trumpet for fasting. And then mm. after service, we will announce that let us come mm -hmm. together and fast and pray. So this is the approach. So it is, mm. we are also building a spiritual war in, mm -hmm. in our lives. And in mm. as much as we are building that wall, this mm -hmm. Satan is planning to come against us. So we have to build the wall, we work, and also have to take the spiritual part also serious. So it, you, you can't you can say, I will stop work and, and always come to church. That one doesn't work. And you cannot say, I will go to work and stop a church coming. That one doesn't work. So we have to combine the two and let the mm -hmm. uh, spiritual father and uh, let the trumpet brewer oh. to blow the mm -hmm. trumpet so that we will come and next week we will fight for seven days. God bless you. Amen. God bless you very much, Papa, for that very practical orientation to the question. God bless you so much. Thank so we would want to go quickly to question four. And uh, I want to take the question four. I called him an Odonko, right? Yeah. Yeah, so Ima, th this is what I want us to do for the sake of time. I, I want to um, paraphrase the question. So we'll take it like this. What are some of the obstacles facing the church here in Czech Republic? And uh, question five, what are the strategies we can use to overcome these obstacles? So uh, basically we'll do a double barreled answer. So you give me one thing you think is facing the Czech here in Czech Republic and what uh, solution or strategy we can use to overcome. Please, are you clear on that? <laughs> oh, we thank God. Well, actually, uh, I, I joined late. I don't even know the chapter from which we had the discussion. And I'll just try to say something more from observation. I've realized that this COVID thing has become a problem okay. globally. And for us to fan into flames mm -hmm. as in being active in prayer and sharing the word of God and Bible studies and all that is kind of challenging. This is what I've realized. And putting structures in context, I will say that um, from the last part that uh, our daddy showed more light on, which was on uh, Nehemiah and the one who was supposed to blow the trumpet, I think that... Mm -hmm. As part of the structures, we, we, we are the agents and we ought to make the structures work. So in this mm -hmm. sense, first, I think we should understand the purpose of our calling. And based on that, we should stay connected to the one who has called us through prayer, through sharing the word of God. And we should consider ourselves as the one who was standing by Nehemiah. Let's think about this. What if God prompts us on something and we refuse to blow the trumpet? What will happen? Mm -hmm. So basically, this is what I can say. We have a responsibility as far as the kingdom of God is concerned. We need to watch 
We need to be active in spirit. We need to obey what God tells us and we need to be active as in do what God tells us to do. Amen. Amen. God bless you. That very powerful submission. Any, any other obstacle, I'll take maybe one or two, then we are, we are done. I think our time is, yeah, we, ha we have a little about three minutes. Any obstacle you have identified facing the church? Our brother has mentioned COVID, and he says that we can overcome it by prayer and then putting together measures to help us to get this situation. Any other obstacle and how we can overcome it? Please, for the sake of time. Hello. I'm trying to beat time, so please help me. <laughs> Hello. Is Sylvester on the line? Hello. <clears throat> yeah, hello, yeah. Yeah, I'm on the line, but Unfortunately, I couldn't join earlier. I was having some internet challenges, so I just joined. So uh, I might not be able to contribute effectively. Sorry. Okay, so, so let, let's take it like this. You've, you've been in the Church of Pentecost here in Czech Republic for about roughly some years. Well, what are some of the challenges you think the church is facing now, and how can we overcome it? I I, I, I believe one of the challenges, um, um, the most, <laughs> let me say, physically, is financial. Mm. Uh, the church uh, financially, I would say, has not been that sound based on uh, the expenditures and that of the incomes that comes in in a uh, way of offering and uh, our tithes. Uh, one way that we can uh, improve upon this is, I think, um, teaching on uh, giving. The other day, Daddy touched on that, and I think mm -hmm. it was really, really impactful. Uh, if we get such of uh, uh, such lessons or sermons uh, to sink into the minds and then the let me say the general being of the members. I think uh, it can go a long way to solve some of our problems, especially in the area of tight. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you so much. It's presiding on the line. Today, uh, I cannot get my presiding. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh huh. Thank God my presiding is here. Sorry, I was having a problem with my, with my mic. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We thank God you got it back. Amen. Yeah, presiding that there is there is some food on our table, and we, we want you to help us to share that food. Uh, what was what's the food like? The, the food has to do with the obstacle that we are facing here as, as a church and uh, how we can overcome it. Uh, two of our brothers have mentioned one is saying the current situation of the pandemic has hit us hard, and uh, our other brother Sylvester also mentioned that uh, the financial stance of the church is something that is bothering and we need to uh, be up with teachings on it to get it better. So from your angle as a presiding, we want to end with you. Okay. Um, I would like to say that uh, generally we have not only the finance, not only the, the pandemic, we have several other uh, um, a situation that is confronting the church, whether it's about the evangelism and in, uh, I, I will put it in general that the church in total, we, we need a total revival in the church. You know, it's coming from the finance, the, the, the evangelism, uh, whatever the pandemic and whatever thing. So it's a total revival for the church that we need. And then uh, coming to all this situation, I will go a little bit uh, down from where we stop reading, that's the verse 21 of uh, Nehemiah. Uh, yeah, the verse 21. It says, so every day from down until the star comes out at night, half of us walked on the wall, while the others have stood guard with spears. So what does that tell us? It tells us 
to, you know, to always be prepared at all times. The Bible says our enemy, they are running like a lion. So whether we, 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 we know it or not, we, they, 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 we should always know that the enemies, they are always, you know, be ready to attack. In as much yeah. as they are ready to attack, we must always be prepared to fight back. Hallelujah. We must be ready Amen. to fight back. And how do we do all these things? The Bible said the weapon of our warfare, they are not kind of, but through God, they are mighty. That is by prayer. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And so the Amen. only way we can fight back with all this situation to revive the church is to go into prayer. Just like Papa mm -hmm. has said, he is the, 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 the big man and then the, the, the trumpet man is standing behind him, sounding the sound. Every one of us will be ready to go by next week when we go into fasting and prayer. Hallelujah. And so we have to pray because the Bible says it's a prayer without season. Okay. This is not the time to relax. This is not the time to enjoyment, but it is the time to pray and so that we mm -hmm. can break the, the yoke. And so mm -hmm. it, it is all about mm -hmm. prayer. It is not about anything. It's about mm -hmm. prayer. And so that is my submission. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Um... I think earlier on, I saw mommy on the line. Oh, okay. Okay, so on that note, we would invite our able uh, acting secretary to take the conclusion for us. Amen. Uh, please, can you project to the conclusion for me, please? The Jews made prudent use of insider information. Nehemiah 4.12. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah inspired the people to rest on the greatness and goodness of God. Verse 14. Both the leaders and the people committed themselves to a mission strategy. Verses 16 to 18. The nobles, the rulers, and the rest of the people readily submitted to the assigned leadership of mm -hmm. Nehemiah, mm -hmm. verse 19 and 20. And the people were carefully, sorry, and the people were cheerfully, even under severe hardships, verse mm -hmm. 23, to experience and enjoy lasting revival in the church. It is necessary for church leaders to know that revivals do not come without obstacles. Yeah. To this end, there is the need for church leaders to adhere to prudent leadership principles. Mm -hmm. It is when leaders, it is when church leaders are seen by their followers as passionate about values and principles, that divine revival, that both groups labor in prayer, fasting, and doctrinal depth to birth and nurture revival as ordained by God. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Elder Solomon. On this note, Please, I'll thank us all for being on the platform for these uh, teachings. I'll hand over to the King John Nemeko. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank We are not hearing him. Please, you have muted yourself. Uh -huh. Okay. Sorry, are you hearing me now? Yes, yes, please. Yes, okay. Please. I started with shipping some words in this, our life of our Christianity. We face obstacles day in and day out every day of our life. Mm. But we have just weapon against the obstacle, which mm. is our prayer. Keeping praying nonstop that our good Lord will continue to fight and prevent those obstacles in our life. These are things I see in a very good way that we have learned today in our Bible study. Uh, we are going to move to our next, which is worshiping. 
and we're going to call our sister Helene to lead us in our worshiping. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I was trying to um, check the meaning of worship. And it says the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity, the worship of God. Mm. And I'm reading something from Exodus 23 um, from the verse 25. It says, worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you and none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full lifespan. I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion every nation you encounter. I will make all your enemies turn their backs and run, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I will send the hornet ahead of you, ahead of you to drive the Hivites, Canaanites, Hittites out of your way. But I will drive them out in a single year. But I will not drive them out in a single year because the land will become desolate and the wild animals too numerous for you. Little by little, I will drive them out by little. until you have increased enough to take possession of the land. Listen to what the word of God says. This is what God is telling us. If we reverence him just by worshiping, if we open our mouth, and tell God who he is in our lives, how we see God in our lives. This is what God is going to do for us, driving out our enemies little by little until we increase. We increase enough to take possession of this land. Beloved, I want you to reflect on what God has done for you. Even from the beginning of this year, look at what 2020 brought. We are all here. Everybody is alive, strong, and kicking. And we have entered 2021. We are almost at the end of February, February 2021. By the grace of God, we still have our help. Let us just reflect and thank the Lord for everything. Worship him with all that is in you. Your mind, your body, your soul, your focus should be on God. Just open up your mouth and worship as I sing. Hallelujah. This is all I have to say. This is all I have to say. This is all I have to say. Hallelujah. That's all I have to say. That's all we have to say. That's all we have to say. Mazilia, <laughs> That's all a song will be. That's all a song will be. That's all a song Ya 
Ay, 
Father, we give you glory. My love, The beginning and the end, you are the God by your own how excellent is your name. None can be compared. Yes, you're the God. The God. You are full of grace. You are full of mercy. You are full of love. You are God. 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 You are full of love. We bless you. Now we have a moment of silence. Oh, Father, we honor you. We give you glory. We give you glory, Lord. your name Jesus we thank you for your presence we thank mm. you for your mighty power we thank you for your graciousness we are we acknowledge your oh God we reverence your name Jesus there is none like you nothing can be compared unto your name oh we give you honor Lord we give you honor Lord open up our hearts to hear from you this afternoon we thank you mighty God we commit the rest of the service unto your hands we ask that you will take over Take over, oh God. We thank you. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 We thank you very much for your wonderful worshiping, Sister Helen. May God continue to bless you and empower you in church district in Prague. May God wholly bless you. Amen. We move to our next. It's time for us to hear the words. Uh, the Simon and the prayer, which is going to be given by Dickness Naomi, which I call my princess. <laughs> we are happy to hear from you today. You are welcome to the podium. May God really bless you and guide you. Amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We thank God for this time once more in his presence. We thank him for what he has been doing from the beginning of the service, for the wonderful Bible studies. We bless the name of the Lord. I want to thank um, our spiritual parents for this opportunity given to me to share the word of God with us today. I want to also thank the leadership also for this opportunity. I ask um, that the Lord will have his way and who speak to, true to me, uh, through me to us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We just bow down our heads as we say a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We have come to hear from you. We ask that you would take the stage. We ask, oh God, that you will speak your mind to us and that at the end, we would have all causes to glorify your name. I submit myself, my tongue, my all to you. Use me for your glory, not me, but you alone be seen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It is a good thing to be in the presence of God. It is a good thing to be among the brethren. No one that the Bible says forsake not the assembly of the brethren. Because when you are alone, sometimes you are pressured with so many things. But when we come together in fellowship, our spirits are uplifted. We want to bless the Lord for that in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> this afternoon, I will be sharing on something um, small. Um, no other foundation but that on Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. No other foundation but that on Christ. Our scriptural reading is from 2 Timothy 2.19 and Ephesians 2.20. 2 Timothy 2.19 and Ephesians 2.20. So if someone is there in the second Timothy, you could quickly read. And the next one is Ephesians 2.20. Is anyone there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, please. You can read. So 2 Timothy 2.19, NIV. Nevertheless, <clears throat> God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription. The Lord knows who's the Lord knows those who are his, and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. Amen. 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 He says, nevertheless, I read from the King James Version. He says, nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Mm. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Amen. Amen. We read the second reading that is Ephesians 2.20. Ephesians chapter 2.20. I will just read it I'm there. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and their and the prophets, Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. Amen. Our foundation, our foundation as Christians is based on the life of Jesus Christ, is based on his examples that he came to set for us to emulate. I want to say that every good building that would, would last or it dura has durability, is determined by what it stands on or what it was founded on. Hallelujah. Amen. The solidity of every foundation determines how much it will last. Hallelujah. Amen. And also the kind of structure that is meant to be upon it will determine the kind of foundation that will be laid. As Christians, our foundation has 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 a set a set demarcation of principles that we need to follow for us to stand firm. There is no other foundation that we can stand on except on that foundation, and which is the principles that governs our lives as children of God. 
It was for this very reason that our master Jesus Christ gave that example of the, 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 the house built on the rock and the house built on the sand. The one which was built on the rock, when turbulence came, when trials came, it stood firm. It didn't fall. Why? Because of the kind of foundation on which it was standing. Meanwhile, the one that was built on the sand was quickly swept away when the waters came and when the storm came. Today, a good number of Christians though have believed are in, are, and are in the body of Christ and are in the church, still have not made him the foundation of their lives. Going to church does not mean Christ is your foundation. They are in the church, but their foundation is on other things such as their personal achievements, maybe their educational standing, maybe on the power and their strengths, maybe on their riches, maybe on the opinions of what people are saying or what is going on for time in the world, maybe on that um, relationship you're hanging on, for some, it can be their fame and their popularity they've gained. For some, it can be their expertise. That is where their foundation is standing. That is the belief that this is all and all. If this thing is taken away, then mm. I am gone. But as children of God today, I want us to see some points that we need as children of God standing in the faith. We need to anchor to as our foundation. We see Abraham, our great, 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 grandfather his foundation was firm even when God asked him to leave his parents and go to an unknown land that he did not even know he left and went and even when the promises that God gave him delayed did not come as soon as he wanted or maybe he would have loved them to come he did not give up he kept his stand on that foundation, which was his trust on God. He held, he held firm to God. His anchor did not lose. He was standing firm on that foundation, which was God, his maker, and his creator. We see a number of the apostles throughout the Bible. They went through a lot of difficult times. Paul said he had suffered shipwreck. He mm. even almost drowned. He went through circumstances, many even to jail. He was almost put to death. But the Lord saved him in all these truth things. I believe it was also because of that foundation on which he was standing. Mm. That's why he could survive all these things. My brother, my sister. What is your foundation as a child of God? On what do you stand? On what do you anchor as a child of God? Do you just come to church because everybody's coming? Do you just come to church because, oh, maybe I have a wonderful and lovely voice, or maybe because I can do this or that because of an expertise? What is that anchor? What is that thing that you're standing on? Scriptures makes us to understand that our foundation is founded on Christ who gave himself so you and I could gain adoption as sons and daughters of the most high God. Therefore, to succeed in this Christian race, we must make Christ our focus. Mm. We must make Jesus our focus. We must make him our focus, meaning that he is the foundation on whatsoever we do, on how we live, on how we communicate, on how we do things. Jesus also makes us to understand in 1 Corinthians 3, 11 to 15 that 
Life is a process of building. Meaning our salvation life goes through a process of building. And for this to be firm, it needs a foundation. It, if it stands the test of time, it is able to weather the storms. It depends on that foundation because if it will, it will test the, the, if it can stand the test of time, it depends on that foundation that we had laid from the very beginning. Jesus is that foundation. He is that foundation as we would quickly read from 1 Corinthians 3, 11 through, through 15. 1 Corinthians 3, 11 through 15. I'll read quickly. For no other foundation can a man lay than what is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall test every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So basically, in this scripture, the first thing that we understand is that there is no other foundation on which we want to live our life as children of God. The salvation that was given to us free of charge, if we want to live it, we must go back to the root of our foundation, to the root of where we got what we have today. Hallelujah. And in addition to this foundation, there are other things we need to put in place for us to stand this test of time, which includes some ingredients that we need to add into our foundation to make it what it ought to be. And also the workmanship, that is what we will do, are all things that are needed for us to go through this foundation and have a glorious life of salvation with our, our master and maker. This makes us understand that when it comes when, when it comes, um, when we become born again or accepted the call of salvation, we have just decided to build a structure. The day you decided to become born again, you decided to build a structure. And this structure is a spiritual structure. That is why when it, from the beginning I said, the, any good building, if you want to stand, any good building that you will see, it depends on the foundation and how it was, the quality of material that was put into it. You cannot compare a wooden house and a brick house. The materials are different. So in the notion, what are we saying? That our spiritual life, the life of salvation is a spiritual structure. And this spiritual structure also has its own ways on how it can be built and on what kind, the things that we will put for that foundation for it to be solid. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the quality of materials or the ingredients that we need as Christians for a firm foundation, number one is strong faith or our trust in God. From the very day we believe, the Bible says we are saved by grace through faith, not of our own works. It is that faith that will have to sustain your Christianity. It is that faith that will have to sustain your belief. That trust that is unbeatable. That belief that no matter the storms that come your way, you are unshakable. We need that kind of strong faith. We see that in Romans 1 verse 17. Please, if someone is there, you can just read, okay? <laughs> you see that in Romans 1, 17, okay? It says that. For, for in it is the righteousness of God revealed 
from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. Amen. We live by faith. Our foundation is founded on faith. Our foundation, which is the salvation we have, is founded on faith. So we need these ingredients day in and day out. Hallelujah. Amen. If you put this, if you take faith out of it, then you are depending on something else. Like I enumerated that today, maybe someone is on basing on a boyfriend, girlfriend, someone is basing on their expertise or maybe on their job because it's a well-paid job or maybe on some other things that I may not know. So, but the Bible makes us to understand that this foundation, that is no other foundation for it to be firm and for it to make, have value and for it to be durable in building this, our spiritual structure, we need a strong faith and we need trust in God. Hallelujah. Amen. The second thing we need is moral purity. We need it from day to day. As we confess Jesus as Lord and Master, we were washed, we were purified from that day one that you made, you made the, the, the call. He said, Father, I, I surrender to you. Father, I give my all to you. And the blood of Jesus cleansed you. From that day, a foundation of righteousness was established. But this foundation needs us to sustain. That is why we need the ingredient of a moral life. Ingredient of moral purity. Ingredient of righteousness. Ingredient of holiness. Hallelujah. Amen. I just wrote that in order for the firm foundation and durability, we, we are admonished to maintain our purity and free, flee from every sin of the flesh. Little lies, compromise. Maybe pre or extramarital relationship or sex out of wedlock and all those things. We, we, we should abstain from every fleshly indulgence, all the things that you know the Lord is against, we should abstain from them. When we abstain from them, then and only then is this our spiritual structure standing on that firm foundation, which is Christ our Lord. The next thing, ingredients we need to add is the word of God. After we have been revived, after we have been changed into a new man, we constantly need to study the word of God. As the Bible says in Joshua 1, 8, this word of God shall not depart from you. You shall meditate on it day and night. Why? It is from there that you will see the principles on how you ought to live. It is from it that you will see the ways and the foundation trademark that God has set for us to build this, our spiritual structure. Hallelujah. Amen. We can also see that we need the ingredient of a life of prayer and fasting. I was happy when we were talking about it in the, in the Bible studies. We need a life of prayer and fasting. We need it. We need it. If you are to raise something, if you are to build something, there are things that you need to use to make it stand firm. Our spiritual structure, our spiritual structure and guidelines make, makes us to understand that it is a part and parcel of our life, prayer and fasting. We cannot live without it. Mm -hmm. From the day you decide to become a child of God, you have decided also to lay the foundation that would be firm for this spiritual structure, which is, your life of prayer 
and your life of fasting. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, it is admonishing us there that we should pray without ceasing. Is it in, in your bathroom? Pray. Is it in the kitchen? Just pray. You can may not pray aloud, but pray. Is mm. it in the spirit? Is it in words or trance? Pray. Because the, the Lord knows when we do that, it is building us up. You may not see it, but gradually it is building you. It is making that spiritual structure growing firm, grow, standing on that rock that when the storms will come, you cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. so I quickly read the five, first Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 18. It says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. But our focus is on the verse 17. Say, pray without ceasing. We need to pray at all times. Sometimes when the edge comes, don't shun it out because I believe God, I used to experience it, the edge will just come. Ah, what, will I, what will I be praying for? I don't even know, but mm -hmm. utter in the spirit, utter mm -hmm. it. Utter it because God is maybe using it to avert a situation you don't even know. This spiritual structure needs these ingredients so, so much because the world we are living in today the Bible says before something is conquered in the physical, it must be conquered in the spiritual. And That's I believe right. the prayer and fasting is the only weapon we use to conquer the mm. physical. Hallelujah. Mm. I don't, we don't have every, any other means we can conquer the physical. Mm. It is only through our prayer and our fasting. My brethren, I want to encourage each and every one of us that we should not abstain from this area. We should take it, make it as Papa. I'm so happy because our father is a father <laughs> that loves prayer and fasting. And I'm so happy because he's urging each and every one of us to grow in it, which is very Please. important for us. Please don't take it lightly. Don't say, ah, this church, you guys like to put plenty of prayer and fasting. Ah. <laughs> Be joyful. Because you may not know what it is doing for you. Like I said, yeah. it is only the physical. The physical is only overcome by the spiritual. Mm. And we only overcome this by our prayer and our fasting. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The next ingredient we need to add in this foundation, which, which is no other order but this one in Christ to build this spiritual structure, is our service. Mm. Our service. Another mm -hmm. ingredient that will build a solid foundation is our service area to God and in his house. In your service, the question is, is your service done in joy? Is your service done in gladness? Is your service or is your service done murmuring or complaining? Or is your service done in show up? Or is your service done in pride? Be watchful. For us to have a firm foundation in Christ, we need service. But be watchful the kind of service you're rendering. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. For the Bible makes us understand that every man's work will be tested at the end. Mm -hmm. Our works will be tested. Whatsoever we will do, the Lord will bring it to the daylight. Hallelujah. Amen. First Corinthians, read quickly, read First Corinthians 3, uh, First Corinthians 3 13. First Corinthians 3 13. First Corinthians 3 13, it says that every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire, mm -hmm. and the fire shall test every man's work of of what sort it is. Yeah, this spiritual structure needs our work. Like I'm saying, the spiritual structure needs our work to make that foundation good. So the works you will do now, it has, it is not just for fun. There's, there's 14 tells us something that happens when you're serving in gladness, serving in joy, giving yourself fully to the Lord. It says, if a man's work abide which 
has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. So you're not serving in vain. So mm. this spiritual structure, like I said, it needs a foundation that is also based on our services. But we should be aware of the kind of service you render because mm. at the end, your services will be tested. Mm. And you see, the Bible makes us understand that the kind of service you give, <laughs> you either get a reward or you get a loss. Mm. We are admonished this day to serve right. We are admonished this day to build that foundation of service in the right perspective that will give glory to God and also build us in our spiritual structure. Amen. Amen. The last but not the least, maybe there are many more, but for now, this is what I will have, is the ingredient of love. The Bible says, how can you say you love me and hate your brother? God is talking to us, whom you have not seen and hate this one you have seen. He admonishes us to love the brethren. He admonishes us to love one another. Love is one of the things or one of the ingredients we need to build this spiritual structure, to have this firm foundation on Christ and on no other thing. We need the ingredient of love. John 13, 35 to 4. 13, 34 to 35. John 13, 30, 34 to 35. <clears throat> John 13, 34 to 35, we read, and it says, And a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Like I said, no other foundation but that of Christ. Christ's foundation was a foundation of love. So he's telling us, it says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have loved, if you have loved one to another, hallelujah. Amen. We need to show love to one another. First in the household of faith and also externally and also to family members. Sometimes I know it's difficult because, oh, this family member, this one is a bone in my throat. But we should show them love and act wisely because this ingredient is one of the ingredients that is also most important because the Bible makes us understand above all of all the commandments. say love, love one another as yourself. Hallelujah. So we need this ingredient. We need it seriously in our spiritual structure to build that firm foundation in Christ. We need the ingredients of love. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to, I want to say that the foundation of God is set sort of apart in the world. The foundation of God sets us apart in the world. And this is seen through the way we act or the way we behave and through these ingredients like I have enumerated. Mm -hmm. you, cannot, you cannot love and maybe your neighbor because those around us watch us indirectly. You understand? So they watch us and they, they some have given their life to Christ, not because you preach to them, but because those ingredients, I may not have no immunity or these ingredients, they were seeing it being manifested in your life. And so they were pulled to Jesus Christ. We may have so many other ingredients, but please, the little I have, not, I have, I have given and the ones I have not added, I believe maybe our papa will add more. I want us to take them seriously. I want them to, I want us to use and add them to our, to, to make our foundation in Christ, 
that the salvation that he gave us, which was based on the sacrifice on the cross, which was that he shed his precious blood that we may be redeemed, will be seen through our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. And the last thing, like I will go back to the scripture we read, the very first scripture we read in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 2.19. Sorry. In 2 Timothy 2.19. I read it for you, please. Yes, if you're there, you can read it, please. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.19. I'm reading from the NLT version. Okay. But God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his. And all who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. Amen. 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 There are two things there that we need to note as we draw this sermon to an end. It's the first one, it says, nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. It means this foundation that God has laid, it stands sure, it is sure. And it makes us to understand two things, that the Lord knows those who are his. I believe if the Lord is saying that he knows those who have genuinely turned around and are living for him, yes, you have given your life to Christ. But are you living for him? Can the Lord be proud to call you his? That is the first question. The second question is, let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. As you name the name of the Lord, have you departed from iniquity? That is a personal question. You and I will need to answer. That is where I call it done for today. And as I call it done, I will sing this song and then we would enter into prayer. On Christ the solely rock I stand. All over the ground. My hope is built foundation do you stand? Is it on the foundation that you have set for yourself or on that foundation that Christ has set for you? 
I want us to open our mouth and begin to thank the Lord. in Jesus name, we are praying, we are asking God, Father, if I have built on any foundation other than you, have mercy and redirect my course, you are praying in prayer. Father, if I have built in any other foundation, which is not you, have mercy and redirect my course. Ya 
Amen. Amen. We saw the ingredients that we need for for us to have a solid foundation to build this spiritual structure. We saw the strong faith. We saw the strong faith or trust. We saw the moral purity. We saw righteousness and holiness. We saw the area of the word. We saw the area of prayer and fasting. We saw the area of our service. We saw the area of love for one another. I want us to pray. You know yourself. Everybody knows this or herself. You know the area where you are lacking. Mm. I want you to begin to pray, Father, in the area oh, I'm lacking. Amen. 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 The Bible makes us understand we are taking our last prayer in in that very Second uh, Timothy 2, 2, 19. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord God stands for having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his. Hallelujah. The Lord knows them that are his. And the Bible makes us understand that, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I want us to, I want, I want us to, I want us to, 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 to remember the cross i want us to remember the sacrifice on the cross and if you you know your life i know my life if you know that you're not right standing with god if you want to show by hand of 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 my hand in the platform you will show and will pray with you if you know the life you're living is not the life that god can boast that he knows who you are his please you can raise your hand and we'll pray the prayer a prayer with you if you want to give your life to Christ, if you want the Lord to accept you as, as His, I want you to raise up. If you want the Lord to support you, as a woman, that your foundation will be based on Him. Amen. 
Father, we give you thanks, we give you worship. We thank you because we have no other foundation on which we can stand except that foundation of Christ Jesus. We thank you for the few ingredients you've made us to understand that we need them, oh God, in order to build this strong spiritual structure in you. We ask for grace to live right. We ask for grace, oh God, to put it into action. We pray in any area where we are weak that you will strengthen us. We ask for grace also to give our life sacrificially and even our time and even our money, oh God, to the building, oh God, of your house. We ask, oh God, that you will revive and strengthen us daily. We ask, oh God, that even as we search the scriptures, you will make, oh God, your word and the rema that is in need known unto us in the, the name of Jesus. We pray that your blessing, oh God, will be part and parcel of each and every one of us. Even, oh God, as you've taken us through this second month, Lord, we are appreciative and we are saying thank you because you are making us to understand that even as we continue this race, our foundation stands only in you and that our hope and our strength are on that solid rock which is Christ Jesus that cannot be shaken and that cannot be moved. Father, we go in this strength as we enter into this new month and we say may your name forever be glorified even as we prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. God bless you. I see you. Uh, we thank Sister Naomi for such a wonderful we thank Sister Naomi for such a wonderful word in our life. Uh, and we have some word to trip in, but for this opportunity, I would like to give the stage to our daddy in the house to give to throw some light on this our foundation before I move on. Oh, because of our time, all is set and done. So you can carry on. Thank you very much. God bless you, Sister Naomi. Uh, you, you have hit almost all the points. So I believe that as we leave this stage, we are about to leave this stage. May God Almighty continue to keep us so that we will build on the foundation that Christ Jesus have already laid. May God bless us all. Amen. Amen. It's time for our tithe and offering. Uh, because of this situation we are facing, uh, there's no way we can give our tithe and offering through money. So we will call our brother, Brother Sam, to short the screen of our the church account number so that anybody that has an offering or tithe can pay to the church account, which is going to be placed on the screen in a short while. Brother Sam, please, if you can short screen the account number of the church. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is the account of the Church of Pentecost. I would say it's a very wonderful to pay your tithe and to give offering because there's a blessing attached to it. I will say to myself, I'm a living witness of paying your tithe and your offering. I know I've fallen short of this period, but I encourage every one of us to be able to pay your tithe and offering. And you will see the blessing, the blessing of the Almighty God in your life, in your finance, in everything you are doing, not just your finance, your marital life your head, your work, your education, as you give to the work of the Lord, God will continue to enrich you in any part, in any way. May you continue to be blessed as you give, as the number is placed on the, on the platform, 
to the work and the house of the Lord. We have missionaries here. We have to pay their rent. We have to pay for everything they are here. They are here because of us. So please, brothers and sisters, may we dedicate our tithe and our offering to the house of the Lord. May God richly bless you as we move on to our next session, which is announcement. We call our assistant secretary to come on board for our announcement. Brother Solomon, thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much, um, uh, uh, Deacon, for such a wonderful uh, session. Uh, please, let's take note of the following announcement. Um, on the, from the 8th of March to the 14th of March, we have Makion's week. So please, let's book it in our calendar and let's prepare for it. As time passes by, the program of activities will be made known to you. And also the officers and workers among us, please kindly note that on the 20th of March, there is going to be officers and workers retreat on the 20th of March. So please kindly